Daddy runs a stately home. My father owns a stately home. Friends in high places? Define high places, sir. Has the Prime Minister been known to drop in for tea? Not to my knowledge, no. Ah. But certain members of the royal family do spend the occasional weekend there, far from the madding crowd. I have been asked, no. I have been ordered to grant you leave of absence. I'm sorry I don't understand, sir. Join the club, Makepeace. Join the club. Your father is, I believe, a collector, right? No, actually, it was my grandfather who was the great collector. He was one of those true Victorian eccentrics. On one occasion, he travelled by camel. Spare me the details, Sergeant. Does your father have in his possession a collection of priceless antique jade artefacts? Yes. But actually, they're part of a trust for tax purposes, capital gains. They've been nicked. And quite naturally, your father is anxious to effect their recovery. As far as I'm concerned, it's a case for the Yard's art and antique squad, but I seem to be in a minority of one. So off you go. To do what, sir? To sort it out, Sergeant. To sort it out. And take that bloody yank with you. 
Tell him to keep that cannon of his holstered. We don't want complaints from the palace, do we? How are we doing? Nearly there. This is what I call landed gentry country. This is some estate. Dates back to the restoration. Restoration of what? Turn right there. Boy, this looks like some kind of historical place. The family have owned this estate since the Magna Carta. You know, if I lived then, I probably would have been a knight in shining armor. If you'd lived then, you'd have been shining the armor at night. Touché. Beautiful as ever. You're a bit pale, though, you know. It's all that London. The air's bad for you. You should spend more time out here. I've lots to talk to you about. First of all, I want to know all about that awful American, that hoodlum Dempsey they foisted on you. Lieutenant James Dempsey, Lord Winfield. <laughs> How do you do? It's wonderful to see you. I hope you don't think I was referring to you. <laughs> Good Lord, no. No, it was some other prideful American. Another Dempsey, entirely. A, a gorilla. Mm. <laughs> Not like you at all. Good man. Did that man carry our luggage through? It's customary. It is? If one is staying. Why is one staying? This is my home. This is your what? My home. And him? He's my father. Make peace. I'm gonna murder you. Installed by the same firm that safeguards the crown jewels. Red beans, temperature alarms, pressure pads. You weren't taking any chances, sir. Well, the collection is regarded as priceless. Priceless, huh? 25 pieces of jade, Mr. Dempsey, or as we savants call it, nephrite. Every piece dating back to the Shang Yin dynasty. Very old. How old? The Shang Yin dynasty lasted from 1760 BC till the 12th century, B.C. That is old. <laughs> 25 pieces, you said, sir. Some countries would have gone to war for less. This expertise with the cocktail shaker makes me believe that all Americans spend their lives behind bars. Well, I certainly put a few people there. But actually, it was a lady bartender from the Bronx that taught me her secrets. I'll bet she did. How do you like your martini, sir? Dry, Mr. Dempsey, very dry. Well, you've been having a lot of excitement around here, which you seem to be thriving on. Frantic goings on. Moronic policemen clambering all over the place, poking and prying. Fingerprint powder everywhere, absolute chaos. The experts told me that they'd taken up 33 sets of fingerprints. It turns out that 17 of them belong to the local constabulary. 
Uncle Freddy. And the other 16? Who they belong to? Myself and the staff. And guests. Guests? What guests? A small weekend party. How small? Some eight people in all. And these guests, they're still in the house? Naturally. And the local police, they questioned them? Endlessly. They searched them? Every nook and cranny. Well, all the same to you, sir. I need to know who these guests are. Harry, would you do it? Mm. My secretary, Naismith, has the list. Hello, Naismith. It's Harry. Uh, father would like the current guest list. Would you bring it in? Thank you. Miss Harriet, how delightful to see you back. Hello, Naismith. My lord, you requested... Uh... I beg your pardon, I had no idea. Mr. Gerald Naismith, Lieutenant Dempsey. How do you do, sir? You requested a copy of the guest list, my lord. Will that be all, sir? Thank you, Naismith. Very good, my lord. Mr. Dempsey. Miss Harriet. There's something about that man I find totally repellent. Harry. There are three married couples, Biffin and Esmeralda, they're old friends. She's a bit of a tippler. Can't imagine either of them as burglars. And then there's Selwyn and Prunella. Selwyn turned up late, had to attend a committee meeting in the House of Lords, and Prunella motored down with an American couple, Arnold and Susie Sims. Yeah. Selwyn met Arnold at some function or other, took a shine and suggested they should come down for the pheasant shoot. Arnold fancies himself with a gun, you know. Squirrels eye at 60 paces and all that. Probably wear a coonskin hat at the shoot. <laughs> that leaves... Two. Yes. Francis Trafford, and a gentleman from the Chinese Embassy, Mr. Cheng Chen Su. And apart from a natural interest in the jade, I can't tell you very much about him. We'll check him out tomorrow. He worries me. Why is that? I've only got his word that he can handle a gun. Well done, Mr. Chen. First brace to you. You see that fellow there? That's Mr. Jessup, my estate manager. I thought he had a slip disc. Take more than a spinal problem to keep Mr. Jessup from a pheasant shoot. He's extremely brave. Oh, foolish. He won the military cross. Where? Korean conflict. There it is again. What? The Oriental connection. <laughs>
I was about to shoot your father. I'm sorry, but like the man said, it's open season. Francis, how was your day? Good bag? Just a few near misses. Wind and deflection, my dear. Wind and deflection. I need a little practice. Oh, I doubt that. Practice makes perfect, my dear. What did you think of her? Attractive woman. Suspect number one. Friend of the family. Or viper in the bosom. Oh, great shoes. Great shoes. So he showed more interest in the guest than in the pheasant. So what? Listen, Susan, I'm trying to tell you that the man needs watching. Don't lecture me. I'm not in the mood. seasons. He's a cold fish. You mean he's resisted your irresistible charms? I worry about you, Arnold. In developing your body, I think you damage your brain. Gerald Naismith is capable of anything. feel about the Chinese, Mr. Dempsey? Prawn balls give me indigestion. Excuse me. Keep circulating. And in the meantime, you'll be doing what? Well, I'll be keeping my eye on... Uh... I can guess who. Right. Feeling sort of under water. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been attending your father for more years than I care to remember. But I've never prescribed anything that could possibly have induced this condition. Do you mean he's drugged? That's my diagnosis. Is in a Mickey Finn? You're the detectives. How will it affect him? Will he be all right? His heartbeat's a trifle irregular, but that'll steady up as he comes out of the coma. His blood pressure's fine. Mind you, he'll have one hell of a hangover when he comes round. Apart from that, he'll live. Keep an eye on him, watch his breathing. If there's any change, call me, all right? Thank you, Dr. Potter. You mind? Your father. 
father drank a glass of champagne that was intended for me. What do we do now? We wait. For what? For something or someone to come crawling out of the woodwork. What was it the local police said? Uh, they had roadblocks set up within four minutes of the alert. That argues an inside job. It's gotta be. The Jade's probably still in the house. Or on the grounds. And Naismith moves to number one position. Do we start leaning on him? Not yet. Let him make his next move. Then we'll lean on him. Terribly worried about Freddy. How is he? He's fine, sleeping soundly, and uh, out of danger. Oh, that's splendid. Well, uh, good night. Smith's talking to Francis Trafford. Naismith does a lot of talking. Keep your ear to the door. I know every sound in this house. Every creak in every floorboard. Anybody moves, I'll know. Oh, that's great. I may not be jungle trained in Vietnam, but I do have ears. Well, that's a fact. Something on your mind? God, I'm so scared. Sleeping pills? Yes. Vodka? I never travel without it. It's a lethal combination, lady. I have trouble sleeping. Is there something I can do to help? Naismith says you're a detective. Is Naismith got something to do with this? You hear what I said? Is there something you want to tell me? My husband, Richard, he was an archaeologist. He wanted to be known, to be famous. He wanted that desperately, to such an extent that he was prepared to cheat. And none of that was reflected in his reports. He spoke of wonderful things coming to light, of new discoveries. And then he contracted typhoid and died. I was staying here at the time. Naismith couldn't have been more kind, more considerate. You had an affair with him? Yes. My husband's effects were sent home. These included his diary. It was all there. You showed this diary to Naismith? He took it. For safekeeping. And sexual blackmail. And now? And now? I don't know. Oh, 
don't go. Please. I'm so frightened. I'm shaking. Try and get a good night's sleep. Oh, you're a great help, Mr. Dempsey. A great help. Lock the door behind me. You bastard. Francis Trafford is dead. I found a body floating in the lake. Oh, my God. Did you see anything? No. I heard something. I didn't see a thing. I'm going to phone Spikings. No, not yet. Why not? Because first we're going to lean on Naismith. Where's his room? Now, just a minute, Dempsey. I resent the way you're ordering me around my own house. This is my territory. What are you hollering? You wake up the whole castle. His sleeves are wet. There's mud in his shoes. If these aren't fingernail scratches, this worm killed Francis Trafford. He was into more dirt than I figured. The killer was obviously looking for something. I want you to work under the assumption that he was disturbed before he found it. If it's there, I'll find it. Go over this place inch by inch. Use your imagination. I'll remember to look under the bed. And under the floorboards and behind the wallpaper and in the toilet if you have to. I mean, search this place. Are you with me? Unfortunately, I seem to be. Could be on the body. You better search that, too. If you need me. You'll be where? Playing Chinese checkers. Mr. Chen.
could have sworn I saw somebody heading for this room. Not here. What'd you find? Nothing. Loads of papers, but nothing. You search every inch of this place? Yes. You search this? Yes! Would you please be careful with this? This piece of furniture has been in my family for generations. I know, since the restoration. Anyone with half an eye could recognize this as Victorian. And any policeman with 20-20 vision might see this as a piece of vital evidence. I was just about to look there. I'm sure. These are copies of Interpol crime sheets. Any names? Yes, Hoffman. Harold Hoffman. Doesn't ring any bells. It will when we put it through the CRO. Do it right away. Tonight? No, I mean today. It doesn't give me much time. For what? I suppose bed is out of the question. Make peace. We choose the weirdest times. Sorry to disturb you, sir. Have you been out of the house uh, this evening? For a short time, yes. I find it difficult to sleep in strange bed. Two people died tonight. Died? That's right. Francis Trafford, Gerald Naidsmith. They've both been murdered. You didn't hear anything? No. Apart from the screech of a night owl and that infernal peacock, nothing. I'll say good night then. If I can be of any assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Well, if I could make an observation, sir. Please. Your book? Yes. It's upside down. Inscrutable. Is he on your list of suspects? Sure. Anything on Hoffman and those Interpol crime sheets? Not yet. We're still working on it. Still working on it, sure. Now, listen, Dempsey. You were sent down here to effect the recovery of some priceless antiques. And suddenly, we've got two dead bodies on our hands. Well, the situation... Now, let me try again. Are you in any danger of recovering the jade? Right now, the jade is just a bait. I'm looking for a killer. I intend to find him or her. Can I depend on that? Yeah, you can. The stuff you asked for is in the boot of the car. This morning, I was down at the local coroner's office. They're in a bit of a panic. Do you remember the old adage, sufficient under the day? Well, let's have no more depopulation. See what I mean? Bear it in mind. Let me get that. You yeah, man. Just out for a little swim? Yeah! How's the water? It's lovely! That water's freezing cold. That's just how I like it. My uh, wife's at home in the water, Dempsey. Do you, uh, you care to join her? No, I'm safe for an old terra firmer. The more firmer, the less terra. Yeah. Well, she's safe enough with me around. Well, when I decide to go swimming, I'll let you know. Yes, do. I do if you don't come out of the lake alive? Call my mother. Can I have my hood? And tell her what? Make peace. Just go back to the house and call Spikings. Okay. It's your funeral. Right. Can I have my fins? You may feel it's necessary to take this kind of risk. My mask. You may spare a thought for the people you leave behind. Make peace. Shut up. Go jump in the bloody... Harry, the telex has just come through. Hoffman is an alias. He's well known in America. He's on the most wanted list. Only he's known there as Arnold Sims. 
Arnold Sims. Well, well, well. Right, sir. Better go fishing for Dempsey. The hero Dempsey and the lady gets hurt. Sorry. He took me by surprise. Hoffman, that is. What do you say, Dempsey? You want to hear her scream? Knowing the lady Hoffman, that might take a lot of prodding. I want you to clean the cylinder and throw the piece in the fireplace. One mistake on your part. The little lady gets skewered, just like our other friend. You better believe me. I believe you. I'm dumping the chamber. in the gun. I want to see the jade. A face down on the floor. Spread eagle.
visit us again soon. Get away from that metropolitan pollution. Thanks. Work permitting, I'll think about that. Goodbye, my darling. Bye, Daddy. Take care of yourself. I'll be down as soon as I can. Mr. Dempsey, I owe you a deep apology. Case of mistaken identity. Silliger. I think I prefer old world English hospitality. You Americans play rough. Oh, you play pretty good yourself. The Jade will now accompany me back to China. It's rightful home. You see, Mr. Dempsey, our government make agreement with Lord Winfield to return Jade to Chinese people. Unfortunately, Mr. Naismith learned of this. The rest is history. We got a rule. <laughs> I guess you're just gonna have to come to terms with it. With what? No longer being a wealthy heiress. You'll always have something to look forward to. Like what? Your policewoman's pension. Mm -hmm. 